Hey guys, in today's super simple and fun tutorial, we're going to make a playful watercolor pineapple using patterns and the wet and wet technique. To start, we need to sketch out its body. You have to decide how tall the leaves will be and how tall the pineapple. I decided to make my pineapple taller than the leaves. Now you can be more playful with the shape, but I just did a simple straight line on the top that tapers out into a rounded bottom. Be sure to keep your sketch as light as possible. If you accidentally darken it too much, just go over it with an eraser to lighten. Now let's paint in the fun pattern. I'm using a size 2 round brush, but any small brush will do, and you can see a list of all the supplies that I use in the links below. I'm going to be painting in wonky half circles and ovals, but you can be as creative as you want. You can do little hearts or squares or triangles. There's no perfect or right way of doing this. You could even do an abstract pattern instead of repeating one, but it won't be as pineapple-y, so be sure to use pineapple colors to keep it recognizable. Notice how I don't use just one type of yellow or orange. I like to drop more color in while it's still wet to give it variety and let the colors blend more. Once I'm done filling in the whole shape with the pattern, I make sure to close it off around. Notice how I don't use one simple line all around the whole thing, but instead close each shape separately to give it more dimension and a lumpy feeling of a real pineapple. Now take a darker color, in this case a brownish orange, and paint in another half oval in each one. Be sure to leave white space between the two colors. Also, it's okay if your first layer is still wet, that will make it more loose and playful where the colors will touch and blend. If your first layer was done with a dark color instead of a lighter color, you can now use a lighter color. We're just alternating the colors. For the last touch, I paint in each shape one more time using a lighter color again, but this time it's more like a line since space is limited. You could also leave it as is without the step if you like the look more. Again, be sure to leave white space around it. Now you can be done here, but I decided to add more lines between the first and second line to make the pattern even more intricate and fun. Only do this if you have enough space to do the line and leave white space. I also drop in more different colors while it's still wet to let there be even more variation interest. Once you're done and happy with your pattern, it's time to do the leaves on top. For this part, switch to a bigger brush. I'll be using a size 6 round, but this depends on how big your paper is. Mine is actually pretty small. Now instead of making the leaves green like normal pineapples, I decided a bluer hue would look cooler and better since orange and blue are complementary colors. I also make sure to dilute my paint with water so that I can add more color in while painting to make beautiful wet and wet bleeds and also just to keep it lighter. To paint the leaves, just use different amounts of pressure on your brush. Start with it barely touching the page and then press down slightly harder until the whole brush is being used and then taper off again until only the tip is being used. We're just varying how much pressure we put on the brush. This makes a natural leaf shape. If this is hard for you or your first time, practice on a scrap piece of paper first. And I even have a video on this that you can study and I'll leave a link to it below. Before I started, I did look at references to get an idea of the pattern pineapple leaves make, but I didn't copy them to keep it loose and quick. Don't be afraid to use references to understand your subject more and keep it recognizable, even if you will be painting loose. Now as I paint, there is no perfect order, I'm just planning on making the leaves smaller on the bottom and bigger on the top. They also mostly point up, especially as we go higher. I'm also picking up different colors and dropping more in. I mix the blue I'm using with the yellow I use for the pineapples to make it green, since this will make it harmonious with my color scheme that I already have. I also notice that since the first layer is still wet, I'm adding more and more paint and painting and more, and it's all blending very smoothly. Notice how I even put some leaves over the pineapple. Don't be afraid to layer like this. I continue adding leaves until it feels balanced, and don't be afraid to add more color in right now and water just to play with the wet and wet technique because we're going to have cool textures here. If you have some puddles, let them be, unless they're really big, then you can use a paper towel to lighten it. But for the most part, we want it to do its own thing. It'll look cooler, trust me. When it feels done, I add even more water to the paint until it's barely opaque and paint in more leaves. This gives it more depth since most of the original leaves are dry and when they overlap, it makes darker colors in between and this just makes it look more dimensional. Also notice now you can see all the cool textures that are being made from our wet and wet technique earlier. Now I chose to keep it simple and I was done here, but you can add more detail if you want and even do a second layer in the center to show more leaves within. For my last step, I always use my white gel pen to add little white dots that act like little stars or sparkles. This is completely optional and not necessary when doing this, space them close together but randomly and vary the size of the circles. Also put them in the darkest parts of the piece for more contrast. This effect can easily be overdone, so watch out for that. As you can see, our final pineapple is super fun but at the same time simple. 
This is just one of my interpretations on the subject. There are an infinite amount of ways to paint anything, so don't be afraid to experiment and do it your way. As long as you incorporate the most recognizable aspects of your subject, like its shape or its color, whatever you paint will be recognizable. We humans are super, super, super talented at interpreting what we see into the familiar, even if it's super abstract. You know this if you ever cloud gazed as a kid or an adult and saw animals and people in the fluffy white masses, or even if you lay in bed and look at your popcorn ceiling and see all kinds of you know things just stuff all like everywhere i know i wasted a lot of time doing that as a kid and it, i still do that so that's it i hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next one take care and stay awesome